Hey everyone, I am here with Coach Rose Slam Johnson, better known as Slam to some of us in the ACE community. Uh, how you doing, Coach Slam? I am doing well. I'm excited to be chatting with you and excited to share a little bit of my story with all the folks in the ACE community. So oh, I can't wait. Uh, you and I have known each other for a while. Uh, Slam uh, has her coaching business, Nimble Roots Coaching. Uh, tell me a little bit about where that what that name means, because I love that name, Nimble Roots Coaching. Yeah, totally. I, I remember the day I discovered the name. Uh, it was actually in a conversation with my therapist, which um, where I was, I actually don't remember the total details, but I know that the the, um, uh, the juxtaposition between nimble and root, rooted uh, were really important to me. One time somebody asked me, when do you feel the most free? Um, no. Oh, my gosh. I, are we live? We're live. We're live. Oh my gosh, we can't edit this. All right, I just take it back. So the first, I remember somebody asked me, "When do you feel the most grounded?" And um, I was like, "When I'm on a bicycle," which I thought was a little bit of a contradiction in itself because I'm moving, but I'm also grounded. And um, and so nimble to me, nimble roots are kind of in the similar vein of like you must remain nimble in order to be on purpose, but also being grounded is a fundamental component of it. I love it. Well, I love starting uh, these spotlight interviews with what are you celebrating? Mm. What are you celebrating right now? So I just celebrated 12, I guess it's technically 13 months around the sun of being fully self-employed. I started my business in 2020 and uh, and stabilized myself with a part-time job for a lot of those years. And I've been self-employed really since 2009. And when I look back, there was maybe a year in there where I launched a business that was successful and financially stable enough to not have any other gigs, but predominantly I always had a part-time job. And in February of last year, uh, my part-time job and I transitioned away from each other and it was go time with business. I spent time in the last 13 years, 13 months revisiting. Should I get a job? Should I like go back? Should I find a stabilizer? Um, I even applied for a couple of jobs and put some energy into it. And, um, and when I turned the corner in December, January, I realized, oh no, I'm, I'm going to make it. And I, and I'm heading, uh, for, for clarity and a future that feels really good. So I'm celebrating not just 13 months of totally self-sustaining work through coaching, but also the trajectory of moving forward on this path for as long as I want. Well, that's huge. Congratulations. Um, that's, I think so many people as they're getting into coaching, that's the biggest question. It's like, can I really do this? Can I do this full time? If that's their vision to do it full time. And I appreciate uh, that you're doing it, you know, that you, you've done what it takes to be stable, be coherent with your money. And here you are, full time coach. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I, I remember in the, my early days, always wanting to find more coaches that were actually doing this full time. And in my experience, it's it's somewhat rare. Um, so I'm always happy to talk to more folks about it because there is it's a decision. You don't have to do it. And if you decide that you want to do it, give yourself some time, give yourself some stability in the process. And absolutely, it is achievable. What has surprised you in the last 13 months since going? full-time coach? Oh, that's a good question. I I think the, the ease of it, truthfully. I mean, there have been moments where I've been like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. It's too unpredictable. It's, it you know, on a, on a bad day or a day where I'm like really doubting myself. Of course, I have the impulse to abandon ship. But in the moments where it's uh, so sweet of connection with my clients and when they're getting the results that they dreamed of, um, it is, it's just, it feels so good and it feels so doable. And that is the, the sweetest surprise of the doability of the, of the like, oh, I actually don't need to like rush. I mean, you, Greg was my coach in early days. I the urgency was like, ah, I'm at my tailwinds at every turn. And what I've realized, especially in the last 13 months is like rushing has done me no, I mean, not no favors. I like got my reps and and that was, you know, it was motivating in some ways, but slowing down and breathing is still the most effective move to make. I love it. Demonstrating the the principle of ease. 
Yeah. And um, what I love is, you know, you're learning all of this for yourself. You're putting it into practice. You're having your own breakthroughs and you support uh, other people to do this in your business. So I'd love to hear a little bit about who's your audience. Who do you serve as a coach? Yeah. So I work with queer small business owners and um, I actually help them go through the process of niching. And since there are a bunch of ACERs listening to this, I will say that having the tools of standards of integrity and life's intentions is one of the most effective tools, I think, for developing a niche. Because when you know yourself, you can find your people. And I've I've been in a couple of different groups where um, there are small business owners that are kind of grappling with their niche, like, oh, who should I serve? And it's like, when I look at the ACE community and the ACE practice, like when you know yourself, it's so much easier to see those people. So for me, it was like an obvious one. Oh, I'm a queer small business owner. Oh yeah. And like, I've been doing this since, you know, essentially 2009. So I've learned a couple of things, a number of them, I learned them the hard way. And so that's been a big, big piece for me of like, okay, cool. I've like figured out what queerness means, what it to me and what it means to be in a, as a small business owner. I'm somewhat familiar with the challenges that at least that are unique to me or common within the community. And so I've been able to bring, weave those in and make, make some things a little bit easier for my people and companion them, which is the best part. I love it. Uh, Can you give me some examples? What is it? um, Some breakthroughs that your clients have had? Totally. So, you know, what I say, uh, is that folks that come to me are either worried that they're not queer enough or that they're not small business owner enough. And so I think some of the breakthroughs that I've seen are around people navigating money and, and charging for their services because enoughness and worthiness comes up and also um, what to say yes and no to. So I had one client that um, we've been working together for a couple of years now, but in the beginning we did a, the, the life's division on like maybe the first or second session And then she got a phone call from the um, school board inviting her to come and be one of the board of directors, you know, a fairly esteemed position that she was compelled by. And this client is a mother, a a partner, and has like kind of just jumped into the running the family business like for many years now, maybe a decade. And she was just like, Slam, I need to get, I need to like start doing things I'm passionate about. So she wrote out the vision. And when the board of directors called her, um, she read her vision and it wasn't on there. And so she said no, which I think, you know, without that tool, she it's a compelling invitation. She said no. And then she was able to hire somebody to do the administrative work that she didn't want to do within the family business, launch the actual arm of the business that she was most excited about, which was more um, educational than service oriented than the business had currently been and landed uh, some really sweet partnerships that have allowed her life to totally transform and be fully into, in who she wants to be. And she's just like so happy and getting to serve the role that she wants to serve. And that's been really sweet to see. Yeah. Uh, I love how much you light up when you're talking about your clients. I know. Can I tell you about one more? The break you say has. Yeah, please. Okay. Please. I love hearing uh, it. So the other, this other client who I've, w- both of these have been, um, we've been in conversation around how to spotlight their growth because both of them have just totally been on a, a really sweet trajectory. Um, this one was in a, is in the film industry and they were kind of on a path towards the producer editing role and they weren't having a great time. The pandemic hit, uh, it was a total different scene for filmmaking. And so with this client, we were able to totally pivot them towards what they actually want, which is cinematography and help them, you know, strategically build relationships and have the uh, agreements in place so that those relationships were easy to develop. They adjusted their rates, which was, you know, like a challenge. They're like, how do I charge more for this? And then they realized that by having more energy of money, they were able to in- invest in their kit. They were able to invest in other things that made their lives easier. And then they were able to make better work and work with people that were, they were more aligned with. And that was just like such a win for them because they've been able to work on films that are so meaningful and relevant for them while simultaneously working with a um, volunteer organization where they were able to like totally infiltrate the structure of the, of the um, 
organization and help them develop roles that made it actually more functional and achieve their goals. It was so cool to see that happening in both, you know, this holographic experience, right? We're like talking about their business and then here they are kind of transforming the way this social justice organization runs. It's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Bonus for everybody. Yeah. I love that story because you're you're pointing to so much of the arc of a coaching relationship, right? There's the there's the shift in the mindset. There's, you know, getting past the whatever's getting in the way around their relationship with money, having that shift. Oh, I see the energy of money could really empower this. And then results, results yeah. in their life, yeah. doing what they love, and then contribution, making an impact that they want to make. Just the whole arc of it. Um, it's a beautiful story the way you tell it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so sweet too, and to see them getting to be engaged in their life in this such a hell yes way. Yeah, love it. Um, you've come up with uh, in your coaching career so far. Uh, I say some pretty cool, innovative frameworks that you're still developing, but uh, I think are already really powerful. One is uh, is the meaningful business approach, the MBA. Yep. And um, and there's this whole bicycle metaphor that I think is really uh, cool and, and works really well. So, are there any bottom line kind of lessons that you can point to based on on what you've been developing? Yeah, the challenge of the bottom line, right? Like I'm deep in this metaphor. I've been riding bikes since I was very little and I actually teach people how to ride bikes. So, um, and I've been studying with Tad Hargrave for a couple of years now who does marketing for hippies. Can't suggest his work enough. Um, he really brings the heart and the wisdom of the world into marketing, which is really special. Um, and he, he prompted me to come up with some metaphors. Like a lot of my work came out of working with him and, um, Bottom line of the bicycle, the ABCs of business and bicycle are alignment, balance, and cadence. And so, you know, you can't ride a bike if it's out of alignment, and that's really your business. Um, you can't ride a bike without the skill of balance, which includes a stabilizer, consistent income, knowing where you're going, the skills that come with running a business, and cadence. That's the... Um, Cadence is how quickly or slowly you're pedaling, how fast you're moving, how consistently you're moving. And um, without those three elements, you, you're you you're, you're going to be sitting on the side of the road with your bike leaning on the ground, which is a very frustrating place to be if you have work to do, if you have some something that you're here, a story, a gift, a service, a transformation. And so I help people pick out the right bike metaphorically right design the right business so that develop the skills and ability to balance the bike and advance forward and then find the pacing that allows them to do this for a long time i've i've ridden my bike almost all the way from canada to mexico i'm missing two little legs and uh, i have both my legs but i'm missing two legs of the ride um and you know on a long distance bike tour you it's not as I mean, people say, Hey, I know this is a marathon. I'm like, no, 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 it's not even a marathon. Like this is a bike tour. You're, if you, if you ride really hard at the beginning, your knees are going to hurt. Your bike is going to break. Like anything can happen if you ride it too hard. Whereas if you are, can see the, the long journey ahead, you can take your time and enjoy it and like stop for ice cream. And that's so much more fun that way. Well said, I think you did it, Sam. <laughs> the, I know the I've been, it's been the evolution of the bicycle. I've also been reading about the revolution of the women's movement that from the bicycle. So there's uh, it, it's connected. Yeah. Great. So for folks watching or listening, go to what is it nimbleroots.com? Nimblerootscoaching.com. And I'm just Nimble about to put that ABCs of biking or business into that's the downloadable thing. It might be out by April. We'll see. Okay, great. So get on, get on Slam's newsletter, check out the, the website. Just want to see there's a lot of cool stuff really illustrating what Slam's talking about. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about how your personal journey or your life has been affected uh, through going through this whole rigorous coach training program. Totally. Yeah. And I will say like, I'm also a hangout on the ACE Slack channel. So feel free to DM me if you have questions or want to um, 
a link to whatever Greg, Greg and I discussed. Okay, so, you know, 2018, I was living in a collective house and I had a conflict with my roommate. I had a boss that I just hated. And I swear, she hated me, y'all. I swear. <laughs> At the time, right? I was clear. And um, I was in a really challenging romantic relationship that I just was like, swirling around in and i joined zo toby's give yourself to love which i i am so heartbroken that doesn't exist anymore but i am so grateful i got to be a part of it and you know uh got fired from the job ended the relationship in a fairly smooth and con consent you know respectful way and was able to go through the the conflict with my roommate with um more love and compassion that had prior been there um my life was totally changed from that six month course. And so, and I also met my partner shortly thereafter, who I'm still with, who I went on my first date with her and I had the green lens in my pocket. And I had never been on a date like this before because I had never had that tool before. And I stopped being present for that. You know, I'd gone on dates where I was like, how do I get them to like me? And, and shifted to like, wait, do I even like, what, what, like, this is just a, who's in front of me and how can I stay present in this moment? And, um, for the next couple of years, you know, carried on slowly evolving pieces. And then the pandemic hit and I was taking, I took the last four day in person, uh, I think it was mastering your life's energies with Maria and, and a bunch of other folks in the team. And we would go off to lunch at the local grocery store that had like a hot bar and see people in hazmat suits and the shelves were emptying. And what I noticed was the people I was eating lunch with, we weren't freaking out, which was like really remarkable given what was happening in the world because we were, we got these tools that helped us stay grounded and clear. And so at that time I, I really, man, did I not, I did not want to use the word coach as part of my identity. I could, how could I dare declare myself as a coach? Um, but through that process, realized like, okay, there's something for me to do here. You know, whether I use that term or not, I've got, I've got a clearer sense of how I want to contribute. And so I was able to, you know, find my willingness to identify as coach, launch my business. I also happened to buy a house during that time period and renovate it, um, which is just one of the most challenging things that, uh, you know, it's up there for one of the most challenging things you can do in life. And definitely for me who, you know, cares about the environment, cares about my local community, um, cares about the workers that are working on my house and uh, was making decisions that felt like they were, I had to make a decision for the next 30 years um, and was able to use all of these tools to help me along the way so that I'm still in that relationship. I still have my coaching business and I still have this wonderful house that's 100% my dreams come true even if it's challenging or imperfect at times. And that is what I credit to ACE. I, I, there, I don't think I could have done this without ACE and I'm kind of blown away that it even happened still four years later, right? Um, so I, had, I, got to, I got to have like quite my, my transformation into physical reality again and again. Wow. <laughs> Not bad, right? <laughs> Not a bad it's pretty good. I love just hearing the the summary of that. You know, I've I've been uh, kind of with you alongside for a lot of it, but it's it's uh, pretty remarkable to to look back and just uh, recount all of your victories and to do it with with the ease and joy and integrity that uh, you demonstrate so consistently. Totally, and and to just like speak to not only am I a coach, but I'm a client who works with a coach, and I've had many coaches in addition to Greg in the same time period, right? Like who I've been able to kind of curl up with and be like, wow, this is so important to me that it is so challenging for me. And yep. I find that nevertheless willingness. So totally always fun to celebrate with you and to, you know, get those little glimpses of attempting to appreciate you because there it's, uh, the amount of support I received from you is it's, I will not be able to live my life. Um, what is it? I, I won't be able to, there, even if I spend my entire life thanking you, it won't be enough. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Ooh. You mentioned the green lens uh, and yeah, I think it, it comes up uh, 
probably just about every coach spotlight interview I've done so far. At some point, somebody brings up this thing called the green lens. Uh, so uh, if folks are listening to it who don't know the green lens, of course, you'll you'll learn all about it if you take any of our courses. Um, what is it, you know, but in, in just kind of plain terms, how, what's the benefit of it? What, what are we talking about when we say the green lens? Yeah, well, actually, I will bring Tad back in here because he um, was recently talking about spells. The, the four spells of niching or something like that. And I was like, oh, spells and lenses are actually, there's like this, it's it's really this like, um, now I may have gotten myself farther out there than I wanted to go. Um, when I approach somebody, I tell myself a story, right? My brain that's prone towards um, identifying danger has already created a story that that determines whether this is or is not not dangerous. And when I approach somebody that is different or or surprising or I, has any level of story, even somebody that I love and want to like, my impulse is to control them. I like, have all these stories about how I can shape shift to get them to do what I want, and it is so unpleasant. It is like that the ultimate form of manipulation and lying. And it's, uh, yeah, it just eats me up inside and drains all of my energy. And so the green lens, like many of the tools with an ACE or relieving myself from spells that I may have inherited from other people, um, allows me to stay connected with my heart, my heart of hearts, which is inherently courageous and compassionate. And to see people in front of me in that way, the way that Gandhi did, the way that Mother Teresa did, the way that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did, and see the the possibility in humanity on such a large scale, it's a those those folks are really remarkable. And that's how I want to show up for the people that I see. Whatever scale I get to interact with people in my lifetime, I want to see them with courage and compassion because it's so much more pleasant for me let alone, it, you know, it seems to be more pleasant for them too, which is a bonus, but like I get to be present. So I think I, that's kind of where, where I stand on the green lens. It's challenging. I, I, my brain is so fast to tell a story or to get scared. And so it's just a really nice handhold to kind of stay at the course on what's true for me. Well done. I'm going to put you on the spot there. <laughs> I didn't know, but I, I knew, <laughs> knew you're up for it. Yeah. No, beautiful, beautifully put. Um, couple more questions. Sure. We have some time. I'm chilling. I'm here. You know, you and I could talk talk all day. But it's true. Give you a few more questions for this this interview. Um, what you you told a beautiful story just um, getting into this work taking the first course, discovering yourself as a coach. Uh, what would you say to younger Slam, say, four or five years ago, just getting started on this journey? What would you, what would you tell young Slam? So, you know, the conversation I've had with myself in, when I've asked myself that question in the past has been like, you do not have to rush. That's been like such a big story for me is hurry up like we like from a place of panic and so that's then the soothing uh part that has been like you you can take your time you know i i my small business journey starts making hummus and bicycling it around san francisco and then starting something called queer camp which is summer camp for adults and i had so i still do i had so much energy and I still have, seem to have more energy than folks around me. And so I was just like creating and playing by any means possible. And that part, I think, was great. It was the like rushing, the scarcity of time, the scarcity of money that had this just layer of anxiety for me that, um, yeah, being here now is like, I didn't, I was, I, this was inevitable. You know, I did some things that helped along the way, but there's like, a certain um it's great it's a great story in um the over story do you know that book, novel um it's a great book about trees and climate change and activism but the um 
there's there's some folks living on top of a redwood tree and they um they're there for many months protecting the tree when um a storm comes and their impulse is to grab on to the tree and grip it as tight as they can and what they realized up there was if they hold on they will get knocked off and so instead the move is to ride the storm with the tree and every time, I mean, I'm still telling myself this to the day. And if, yeah, of course, if I could go back to my 20 year old self and they would believe me because plenty of people told me this then too. Um, ride the tree. Like all is well. Ride the tree. The storm, the storm is, you know, here. And there's some way that the tree and the storm are like not necessarily on my side, but like that it's okay. And I think, yeah, the more I can remember that now. And the more I, the times where I remembered it then, it became a fun dance. I love that story. Um, and it, you know, it reminds me, uh, you know, you were part of our, our social change maker coach panel that we had in November. I know you've been an activist, um, and, um, I'm curious for the change makers who are considering either working with a coach or becoming a coach or getting some coaching skills to bring into what they're doing. What do you see is the role of coaching in social change work? Yeah, that, I think that's a great question. You know, I myself am like, gosh, am I doing enough for the movement? And I think that doubt or worry is common. I talk to other people that share it. And what I think, um, is true is that we are needed now more than ever. And there is conflict and there is division and there is, you know, non-consensual treatment of a lot of people, animals, earth, resources, et cetera, weapons. Um, and burnout, which, you know, is working too hard, too fast without getting the long haul is um is inevitable in business it's inevitable in activism it's inevitable in romance it's inevitable in with your physical body and so coach whether you are coach or being coached or both you know, or all everything in between is the opportunity to set the cadence for the movement and yes it is urgent <laughs> and there's this great expression that is we have very little time and therefore, we should move very slowly. And I don't mean sit on your couch and do nothing. I mean, think through what you're going to do. Collect your people and do it. And that's what coach can help you do. That's what you can help people do as coach. And the best part of coaching is that I'm getting coached while I'm coaching. So I'm constantly in action with myself, in realignment with myself, and um, able to you know, hear those little voices in myself and actually listen to them and actually be inspired by them. I could say so much more on that, but I'm going to stop there. That was perfect. That was perfect. I love it. Such a stand for coaching. Mm. Well, I've both seen the benefits and seen the benefits of it, right? Like I've experienced the benefits and I've witnessed the benefits. And it's such an honor to be with people when they are able to reveal something from inside themselves and see it for themselves for the first time. Because that, that's what, you know, that expression, like what the world needs is more people who've come alive. That's the moment of aliveness, that self-connection, that clarity, that focus. And then there comes the easy grace. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, there may be some people watching this recording who are considering becoming coaches themselves, um, considering going through a training, getting certification, or like I said, even just getting getting some coaching skills uh, that they can bring to whatever they're doing. Um, you've, you've done a great job of enrolling them so far into the possibility, but is there anything else that you would say to someone who might be listening or watching that is considering, maybe I want to uh, get some training and become a coach. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, uh, I studied nonviolent communication. I think I started in 2009. I went on, I got a, uh, I didn't get the full certification, but I had a middle, middle level certification for teaching it. 
And um, I had done like a number of other trainings, but part of the Yes Jam, Yes World for a really long time. So I have I had all the um, tools in my in my body, in my brain. And a friend who was a coach was like, dude, just start coaching. Like, just put out your shingle. And I tried it in a couple different ways. Um, cause you know, she wasn't the only one that told me that. And, um, it never, it was so freaking hard. Every, every session, every hour was grueling. And, um, I wasn't planning on doing my two year certification with the Academy of Coaching Excellence. When I took that four day training, I was just like, this is going to be great self-development professional development. I saw people go in there and come out, you know, more awake and alert. And I thought, oh, sure, I'll just go for four days. Um, And I just can't recommend doing that enough. Go for the four day training. It's so reasonably priced. Your life will be transformed. If it isn't, go find another coach training program. Totally fine. What I found was that I was super aligned with what ACE was teaching me to do. And it worked for me. And so it was a clear and obvious yes to move forward with the two-year program because I got the skill set that helped me have a really enjoyable hour and then six months and then three years with my clients that I could have made up on my own, but I, it, I wasn't and it wasn't working and I didn't want to. And I've seen a lot of people out there that have coach on their title. And when I ask them about their training, they're like, meh. And then ask them how it's going with their clients. And they're like, meh. And it's like, okay, right here, there's a path for you. There's this beautiful package. Um, And I personally think that if you go through ACE and then work with me for six months, your business will be like really blown up because those two things combined uh, really will will help you. And I've worked with a couple of different ACE folks that have been in the process of launching their coaching business. Don't do it alone. And you don't have to, you don't have to work with me, but like, there are so many people in this community that will support you to have like a clear and enjoyable and challenging path. I always said the Academy of Coaching Excellence was the appropriate amount of challenge for me to be wildly successful. I both felt at the top of the class and constantly challenged at every corner of the way. And that was really like the first time I had felt that in my, in an educational experience. I mean, I could, again, I could go on and on about it, but you know, if you're thinking about it, do the four day course, you got nothing to lose. People spend so much money on professional development. It's a small, I mean, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but like, it's like, what have you got to lose here? I don't think you can. Uh, yeah. Enough. Shut up. I love it. Oh, no, no, it's great. How much you love Ace. Gosh. I don't want to, I don't want to cut you off. Um, well, I just want to give you Maybe we can close with this. Uh, how can people work with you? I know you have some offering and you do one-on-one coaching, but you also do some workshops. Uh, what would you love people to know about how they can learn more about working with you? Yeah. So my website, nimblerootscoaching.com um, is a great place. I, I actually learned, I feel like I tried doing workshops and group courses and one-on-one coaching and kind of I'm like, ah, too much. And I've actually just do one-on-one coaching right now. That might change in maybe six to 12 months. I'll do courses again. But right now, the best way to work with me is one-on-one for six months. And you can always renew. Some folks do. Some folks are complete after that. Um, you can, I have a free disco. It's called Discover and Navigate, but hopefully by the time you see this, it'll say disco because that's so much more fun. You have a disco nap. You have a disco chat. Um, it's really a discovery session where um, I get to know you and you get to know me and you get to decide if you want to work with me. Um, yeah, that's really the main offering right now. And it's so I did an evaluation and audit of what I was offering last year. And I was like, what? What well, had great results? what felt, what brought in sustainable income and what felt really awesome to deliver. And it was one-on-one coaching. So I'll be doing that for as long as I can imagine. Cause it's awesome. It's such a pleasure to sit with people for that 55 minutes and really, um, see them seeing themselves in a whole new way. So if you want to go with me, call me. I've got Perfect. one I've got in April and then more spots will open again in May. Okay, great. One spot in April, more spots in May. 
free discovery session. We will put your website in the, the comments for the YouTube video. Uh, check Slam out. You've gotten to know her a little bit already, but you know, uh, she's a great coach. Mm. So thanks for, thanks for your time and your energy and, and your stories. Uh, I think it's going to be really valuable for some folks who are uh, already coaches in the community, uh, for folks who are considering being coaches or hiring a coach. So uh, this was great. Thanks. Thanks for a great conversation. My pleasure. Have fun out there, y'all. If you want to talk to me, come talk to me. If not, just find people that you have fun with like, and go find your biz buddies and just find your fun. <laughs>